Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very happy and a very healthy uh, Thursday. Yes, hey, happy Thursday, Thursday. What day is it? It is the uh, 21st of March. So as always, want to be wishing you well, want to be wishing the best, the best. And finally, Bitcoin's actually making some moves right now. So we got plenty of new things to talk about. In fact, continuation off of what we looked at on uh, on live stream yesterday. Anyways, getting a live stream right here, right now. We do see that Bitcoin has taken that next leg up above 4,000 area, which was actually activated, was confirmed right after the end of the stream. Um, I did take a small long position, uh, done with options. I am long the, t uh, I'm long 10,000, uh, sorry, I'm long 10 4,000 strike calls and the uh, short 30 of these 4,000 strike puts and positions doing pretty damn well right over here. And again, this is the beauty of options. Been a very, you know, been a very quiet week and pressure off, you know, pressure off as, uh, as, as I know a lot of people are trying to trade spot right now and trading spot can be quite tricky, but trading options, uh, gives, you know, a lot of leeway with how to manage positions. Anyways, going back into the charts and looking at the, looking at the bigger picture, we are actually still finding resistance along this potential rising wedge and the volume signature for a rising wedge is correct on this guy and the shape and the size and the smell and the taste. But I do hate wedges. The wedges are my least favorite pattern to play, but it is still being respected. So I'll go, I'll run with the assumption that it is, uh, it is still valid until told otherwise. Of course, that would be a, uh, if, if we could actually close like an hourly total above 40, 45, 40, 50 ish area, you do see that we've actually perfectly tested this uh, once, twice, thrice, right over here um, in the last four-hour dildos. Sorry, in the last three of the four-hour dildos. So <clears throat> looking at something like this, I do think to myself, uh, if this is going to be a rising wedge, I would still not be even wanting to play the rising wedge until we actually break back down below. I mean, technically 39.50. 39.50 is going to be the big support to break now. Um, it's no longer 39 as far as I'm concerned. It is 39.50. And I'm actually going to get rid of this guy right here. And of course, 4,000 is likely to be support as well now. So if Bitcoin were to pop back down, I'd want to see it hold support at 4,000. Otherwise, the rising wedge idea does become a lot more of a a lot more of a real uh, reality. So if that were to happen, if we were to actually break 39.50 to the downside, I'd be looking at this trend line right here coming in around uh, 38.50, 3,800-ish area to be met. And, uh, and that'd actually be a nice place. So I wouldn't be looking to put on any sort of directional shorts until that area is uh, until that area is uh, hit or taken out. For right now, Bitcoin is still struggling along this resistance, right around we could call it 40, 40, uh, 50ish area. But Bitcoin's been kind of like moving. It's it's been moving, having forward projects progress, but as a slug, which does overall make me very concerned because. Usually when you're coming out of, if you are going to actually switch around a market cycle, which I don't believe that we are switching around the market cycle right now, uh, you want to see conviction. You want to see serious, massive moves, very volatile and, um, and and with a lot of conviction in the market. We don't really see that right now. Now, of course, there is, you know, that you, you have to differentiate between an actual accumulation phase and then, you know, a bull phase. That's a completely different story. But that's typically what I've seen. Anyways, more importantly, if we do break out of four, uh, 44, uh, sorry, 4050, I still do run with the assumption that we're going like very, 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 very likely to 4110, 4120-ish area, um, kind of, you know, fulfill a retest of the prior high, which on the daily, it looks a lot more clean. Uh, that would also be the measure move off of the, what were we looking at over here? Yeah, the flag formation, which actually took off. So let's just go back and, and draw this guy in. But this flag formation right here, um, did break out to the upside. So that would be pointing around where I'm going to guess it's that 4150 ish area. Yes, it is. Okay, great. Awesome. Uh, 4115 actually. Uh, but I'm, I'm kind of using those terms interchangeably between, you know, a little over 4100 and 4150. That's, you know, the next resistance block, I suppose you could say, if we break out of 4050, um, which for right now is still being respected. However, on the daily, everything does look good for continuation. The daily looks fine to me. Um, if I was just looking at the daily, I would be bullish for another move towards, you know, 4150, maybe even 4200 basically at the prior high uh daily stokes still up daily stokes getting you know more mature up there uh but they're still not there they uh they are not showing you know any sort of exhaustion just yet uh daily rsi looks fine to me uh reaching back into the bullish control zone uh so again that would be certainly a much more positive thing daily jewel not telling us anything um if it does get into this range around the 80 i would be looking to be a seller as that has been a phenomenal indication of major tops for the for over the past year uh this was your top at, at 12,000 in february last year uh, this was your top at 10,000 in may last year this was your top at 8400 in, in august last year this was your top at 7400 last uh, last year and then once again we've gone into this area this this area did sell off on first pass if we get back on over here. I mean, it has been perfect for the last year. So the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. So looking at the screen and things get all, all sorts of crazy with Forex. Uh, been so much fucking fun, by the way. 
But um, but more but more importantly, <clears throat> you know, I'll be t- I I I would be looking at something like that, and uh, and I'd imagine that if we were to get the jewel around this 80 marker, uh, that would probably correlate with price action somewhere around that 42 4150 to 4200 ish region, basically around your prior high, which a lot of people are going to be sellers there just by the nature of it being you know your prior high, and that's what you're supposed to do because you sell the double top, and that's you know it always works out. No, of course not. That's a trading books for dummies type thing. But it, it you know. A lot of people do operate off that uh, off that sort of assumptions, and we do have resistances coming around there. And you know, regardless, mo- most importantly, actually bringing up the volume profile, you will notice that uh, once once Bitcoin gets back above uh, that 4150, 4200 number, there's not really much stopping it. I mean, even more importantly, you can see that we've pretty much broken out, or I would say that we're very we're on the verge of breaking out of this uh, 4050 area right here, which really not too much uh, not too much stopping you from yeah about 4150 after that. Um, you will you'll be dealing with all these prior highs, of course, but overall, uh, a lot of things kind of lining up right now. So I would be cognizant of that. Uh, overall, I'm not bearish um, for like a trade until Bitcoin either breaks da- back down below. I mean, I mean, if it breaks that back down below four thousand, this this whole formation will start to come into into question. I would start looking at this more like a rising wedge, uh, but it's really not until it breaks down below thirty nine fifty where you know you can actually have it, or at least I, I, I would imagine that a nice trade does uh, does actually present itself uh, so i'd be looking toward you know for another 100 150 move which that's about as much as you get in bitcoin land nowadays <laughs> jesus christ man um but for right now, you know, looking okay, and uh, regardless, re, uh, regardless of, of how we react at 4050, you know, a trade can be made here either which way. Do we reject from it once again? We'll take a short and, or sorry, this is not financial advice, but not financial advice. Go fuck yourself, SEC. But <laughs> just kidding, don't do that. Um, unless if you're, you know, unless you're so inclined. Uh, but more importantly. You know, I, you know, I could take a short right here at uh, at resistance, and then if we take it out, just get long, and uh, very, 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 very likely that we have another, <laughs> maybe a little bit less than a hundred dollar move up. Uh, so fair enough, fair enough. Um, so in this next block right here, I probably will be looking for some uh, for, for some pr- positional directional sells. Uh, but for right now, I just want to let Bitcoin kind of do its thing, sit back, let the options work for me. Again, a beautiful position. And this is, you know, this is how options make life easier. So I always forget to talk about this as well. All my programs are on sale. That includes the options program. I'll flash the code really quick. Uh, where is it? Where are your code? There you are. Uh, year 20. Maybe I even have the... Yeah, maybe I even have this guy over here as well. And we can bring up all the programs, which again are on sale with that code. Uh, that's technical analysis program, the options program, and the jewel indicators. And I want to explain this because I don't want there to be, uh, or I want to reduce any sort of confusion. The technical analysis program is the all encompassing all encompassing technical analysis program, which doesn't just include technical analysis, also strategies, also position management, risk management, understanding underlying market dynamics, and of course, all of the bonus modules plus access into the members only Discord community, plus, you know, actually uh, access to a couple of the proprietary indicators. Um, the options program is like that, but with regard to options, like what we we're just looking at on Dribbit, and then the jewel indicators are just quite literally indicators, nothing else. Um, they all have payment plans up to I think about ten months. So, um, so again, if you do need, if if, if you do, what if you would prefer to play, pay it over time, then that's all good. That's there for you. And of course, I always want to remind people, please, please, please take advantage of my free material first. I have literally over a thousand hours of free material with with actual dedicated playlists towards learning technical analysis. Um, which are 100% completely free on my YouTube. Take advantage of that first because if you are going to invest in one of these programs, ooh, there we go. All right, let's see. Uh, if you are going to invest in one of these programs, I just want to make sure that you know we're all coming from the same sort of background as <clears throat> as being interested in doing trading, typically as a living, not as a not as like a hobby, not as like a dabbling. Because uh, as I just said, you will also be investing into the members only Discord community, which I want to make sure that everyone there, you know, it, it, the the group maintains its integrity. So again, I don't want to feel like I'm. I, I, hopefully, no one takes it as like down talking or anything like that. It's not intended to be. Um, but what I can say, I just keep on looking at my other screen. Uh, Forrest is going crazy right now. <clears throat> but what I can say is that, um, you know, it's for, for, for most people, it's going to be complete overkill. It's 35 hours plus long of content for both the TA and the options program. So most people don't need to go through that. You can, t- again, just take ca- just take advantage of my free materials. Um, the, the introduction to technical analysis series and then also the technical indicators and strategy series. And then also I did an introduction to option series, which actually does include one of the videos from one of the fi- one of the 52 videos from the options program. Obviously, you know, it's, 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 you probably need a lot more than that, but that strategy that I share there is actually one of the ones that is probably most, 
most use. I mean, I, you know, I'll, I'll always use that strategy, no matter what, what skill level you're at. I mean, that's, that's basically what I've shown over here on the, um, on the, on, on Deribit. Basically got a couple of, I got a put spread on and then a call spread on a uh, time spread on for the call. So, uh, t uh long 10 of those, uh, in the money and then short these 42 fifties, but Hey, all right, we'll get back on to the actual analyses as we look back on Mr. Bitcoin. Oh my God. Did I get filled or not? Yes, I did. Awesome. It's a good day. Okay, great. Let me just look at my other screen. Sorry about that, guys. I do apologize about that, but do want to make sure that I am safe in Safu as well. Okay, all right. Um, there we go. Uh, let's try this. Let's try something like that. Okay, great. Okay, awesome. Okay, ha, there we go. MT5, do your job. So when we're looking at these uh, medium time frames, I do want to see where the oscillators are as everything kind of is getting a little bit higher. So I am monitoring that. Uh, four hours so still getting quite up there. I believe two hours are turning right now. So we are starting to see the very low time frames uh, turn. Um, six hour probably going to be up as well, but looking a little bit weak. Uh, what about eight hour? Eight hour is looking up, fresh cross up actually. Ten hour looks, ten hour actually looks uh, look, looks quite strong. Same as same same as eight hour and twelve hour never really crossed down. Um, so we are getting everything quite high, which as we do approach that next sort of resistance block, that is on my mind. As I probably will be looking to put on directional trade for that, um, at the very least. I mean, <clears throat> of course, it's a very easy trade to manage because. <clears throat> because if we do if if we do take out the prior high essentially at forty two hundred, you know, I'd just be out. Because it is a directional trade, I'd be happy to uh, I'd, I'd be happy to let it breathe a little bit. So that is the whole thing with it is is essentially no trade is guaranteed 100% to work out. But finding a good risk reward potential is what it's all about. You know, as a trader, um, don't need can't be perfect. I mean, it's quite literally impossible to be perfect. But it's finding those over time. That's how you can do this. You know, as a living and 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 make those statistics work for you. But of course, that comes with great risk management. So you know, it'd be very imperative to realize if this thing actually is breaking out. Uh, but for now, it uh, does seem like a few things are lining up. Overall, this formation right here is shaping up to be its own consolidation as verified by the volume signature right here. You do see a nice orderly drop off in volume going from left to right. And you'd imagine that another kind of, you know, an, an, another kind of walk up right around here would fill this guy out completely. And then we'd, you know, likely be ready for the next move. Of course, I do want to give a shout out to the historical volatility rank, which did give insight into the move yesterday. Um, again, right off of uh, right off of the stream. Jesus, man. <laughs> Forex moves so insanely fast it is it's 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 the most crazy thing ever it's the most amazing and crazy thing ever at the same time um here's the hourly on forex or is this the hourly yes this is the hourly and we're kind of getting the same sort of signature here as well which does make me a little bit apprehensive right as uh, i want to see it get above this trend line and then break out and that's going to be my next sort of um signal i suppose for myself to say hey we have a legitimate move going on that's going to actually ch you know you know have some momentum behind it um right now i view this price action as very slow and very clunky but it is constructive in the more immediate time frames i mean this this is certainly very constructive right here the whole however is very corrective and when i say the whole i mean the last four months five months going back to november so november december january february march it's embarrassing five months jesus man um so there we go okay make let me make sure that i actually get out of my position on this forex and we can do something like this okay come on baby show me the money there we go okay great um so yeah you know when i look at something like this this is quite corrective in nature the volume signature also very corrective kind of confirming that so that is why in the macro time frames i am I wouldn't say I am, I'm certainly not bullish. Am I bearish? I don't know if that's the best word to be saying. I would say I'm neutral to slightly bearish. On the medium to low time frames, though, I am a little bit more bullish. Um, and I think that that's been coming around pretty damn clear ever since we broke above the Cyan 89 exponential right here. You know, it's been, you know, it, it tested that one, two, three, four times at support and then rallies off it, which is, you know, quite a good sign. Um, so again, that's kind of what I'm thinking with, uh, with, uh, with, with my trading behaviors right now, as, uh, the more immediate time frames are constructive and are signaling that, uh, this could very easily take another leg here. And if it does 40, uh, 41, 20, 41, 50 is kind of where I'm looking towards by the same token, you know, do we play out a rising wedge here? Like I said, I'm a wedge racist. I hate them all fucking Holocaust them, but, but <laughs> we are respecting it. And as long as it's being respected, I will, I will respect it. And of course, more importantly, you know, when it comes to wedges, when it comes to any sort of patterns, I love playing a pattern in the in the direction of the overall market, but I don't like playing counter counter directions essentially. 
which for me, what do I mean by that? Well, in an overall bearish market, with yet, which yes, we are still in an overall bearish market from the macro time frame perspective, as we're you know making lower highs and lower lows on a weekly. Uh, I would be saying that uh, you know it's the the trend is down and a rising wedge typically is you know a bearish three result pattern. Um, it's the falling wedges in a bearish market that I would really uh, uh, run away from playing. But uh, as, as as I think a lot of people found out over here when everyone was calling falling wedge to fourteen thousand whatever it was. Uh, back in like July uh, on this bull trap, which of course just ended up being a bull trap. Anyways, while we're here on the higher time frame, let's go back to the two-day total time frame. The two-day total time frame has made uh, new highs, and ha and more importantly, you know we are seeing continuation off of taking out the fifty. Uh, sorry, the fifty exponential right here, the the green moving average, which again, uh, to me looks like it wants to it it it, it wants to have a move up. Um, you know, if I was just looking at the two day, I would be bullish off this. Uh, the two day stokes are crossed up and have defended the bullish control zone and gaining momentum away from each other. That would be a certainly more positive sign Two uh, two day RSI looks fine. No glaring obvious issues here. Um, and two day, two day, uh, two day jewel is not really given too much. Uh, what about the three day? The three day, you know, again, looking, looking pretty fine as well. Uh, we do see the red 10 symbol moon average coming in right around 3,900. So that would be, you know, uh, uh, that would be our more preliminary support and the 21 exponentials actually supporting it under that. So we have a lower period trading above a higher period, which typically, t uh, typically a, a, a good thing. Um, back now over to the three day Stokes, which is very interesting to me right here as well because we do have this trend line that has formed. Oh, I guess I already have it in there. We have this trend line that's that's actually been formed all the way back from the high at twenty thousand in um, December of uh, of, of twenty seventeen. And that has gotten all of the highs or major bull traps uh, since then. Um, this was your bull trap at uh, 10,000 in May before moving down to 6,000. This was your bull trap at, uh, in August at 8,400 before moving down to 6,000. Of course, this would match up with the jewel signature as well. And this would be coming in pretty damn soon as far as price action is concerned. So, you know, looking at this, uh, if you, you know, you'd imagine that we probably get if Bitcoin were to take another leg up, we'd probably be around 4150 when it does fulfill this trend line. Also looking at the jewel, kind of getting around that same area. Also looking at, um, you know, also looking at our horizontals and volume profile. So it is, it is my mind. Uh, you do see this measure move pointing all the way up to 4,500. That would be the most bullish scenario that I have right now. I don't believe that that is likely. Uh, but if we were to break above 4,200, then yes, I would be on the side of that. Um, for right now, I look at this and I think to myself, uh, yes, we do have a consolidation right here. It would be more constructive in nature, uh, aka more bullish in nature. And if we did actually initiate it, if we actually did, you know, confirm above about 4,150 to 4,200, then I suppose I would be looking towards this next, uh, this next resistance uh, territory right around 4550 we'll call it which is also going to likely align with the 200 exponential and 200 simple so these few things i am uh, I, I am very cognizant of right now as uh if we were to break above 4,200, that's probably going to come with also our other higher time from switching around. We're probably going to see the weekly both open and close above the 200 exponential moving average, which to me is one of the is one of my preliminary macro um, uh, looks. I suppose you could say I'm uh, I'm at a loss for words, but uh, but uh, but more importantly. If we were to both open and close a weekly total above the purple 200 exponential moving average, which is around 4,100, right around that same area that we just looked at uh, with all those resistances, just adding another one in there, um, <clears throat> then I would be looking for a much more extended run into the 4,000s, and that would likely be you know, into the 45, 50-ish range. Um, I think that that would be extremely likely if that were to happen. Anyways, let me just make sure that my other screen's safe, safe and safe over here. Come on, baby. Show me the way. Show me the way. Uh, let's see. Getting a little bit more intense on Mr. Forex right now. Come on, baby. Jesus, powerful Forex. Anyways, um, yeah, so that would be my first preliminary preliminary change for a macro time frame if things were to actually, you know, shuffle around. Um, of course, the more important thing that would actually change my mind from being not bearish to bullish actually would be getting back above the yellow 20 month exponential on the monthly. That's kind of what I used in traditional marks to judge if a stock if an equity was, you know, generally bullish, generally bearish. And oh my God. Motherfucker. I left the sale thing on there again. I apologize about that. I do apologize about that. I'll take it off right now. God damn it. That's so embarrassing. It's so fucking embarrassing. Ah, fuck. Oh, well, fuck it. Anyways, uh, 50 exponential on the monthly is where I'd be looking for, um, sorry, is where I'd be looking for on a monthly time frame as, uh, as, we are getting closer and closer to the end of the month. It is now the 21st of March. So that means that we have, what, another nine, 10 days at most. And, 
whether we close above or below the 21 exponent, or sorry, be uh, above or below this green 50 exponential is going to be of the utmost importance to me because that will also come into confluence with likely. Um, with, with with likely suggesting that we're either going to have a move up into the deep 4,000s, like I said, 4550, 4600 probably becomes very very likely if we were to do that. And by the same token, if we actually uh, if we if we close below the 50 exponential, I'd be more bearish, looking for you know I, I, I'd be looking for a move down to the low side of the range at 3400. But overall, it would still really keep in contact that uh, 2500 and low 2000s are a severe possibility for Bitcoin. Jesus Christ, man, Forex is fucking moving right now. Jesus. Anyways, um, of course, uh, like I said, the 21 exponential very far away right now, 5,200. So it's got a lot of work to do if, um, if, if we are going to actually take it out uh, and make me bullish. Anyways, um, and then the third and final and most important piece to actually change my mind around is if we get back above 6,000 right here, the area of breakdown uh, that we spent about, an, uh, about a year going, going, uh, going around. If Bitcoin could get back above there, that would be a severe change of behavior as well. Uh, that would be like the most traditional thing. You're probably going to know beforehand, though. Anyways, back onto the lower time frames. Um, I'm curious if there's any sort of divergences forming right now as we are, as we do approach this resistance. And we just set another four hour dildo in stone. Um, and bringing up our oscillators, we do have a little bit of divergence going on right now. But that will be negated if we do take out this uh, 40 50 high, which again, this, you know, stair stepping its way up, it is. It's very slow. It's it's like it's moving like molasses, but it is you know gotta respect it while it's while it's here. Uh, we do obviously have very severe divergence on an hourly, going all the way back, and I believe that this divergence is present all the way up to maybe a six hour. Yeah, the six hour is showing a little bit, um, but this is not necessarily confirmed as a local high just yet on a six hour. Jesus, man, forex is just my god. If you want something to do during the end of the day, trade Forex. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, speaking of being at resistance, I do want to go over here to GBDC, which GBDC did sell off on the open yesterday. Let's actually go to the daily. GBDC did open up, sorry, GBDC did open up a major up open yesterday, right around the 89 exponential, this cyan moving average right here, which was essentially the prior high, but immediately sold off, coming all the way down to a seven, 476-ish area, with, sorry, 478 to be exact, and closing the day as a massive, I mean, this is technically called a long-legged doji dildo, uh, or, or spinning top, whatever the fuck you want to call it, typically a signal of indecision and perhaps reversal, but more importantly, what I need to see now in order to get, um, in, in order to get bearish on this, is I need to see I need to see this actually have continuation to the downside. I need to see this thing actually take out the low, which again is seven. Uh, sorry, four seventy eight. Which I'm gonna put in a uh, I'm gonna put in an alert right now just in case. And as you can see, we actually do have some pretty uh, s uh, some pretty uh, good con um, good exponential moving average crosses going on right here. That's a twenty one in the fifty cross the upside, having a bull cross. So I would respect that, and this could just be a retest of that. So as long as we do hold this low, I would be I, I wouldn't be in any sort of rush to get into a position if we do take out the low then yes it starts to look a lot more like this is a rejection this is a high and actually gbdc forming its own sort of uh rising Oop, i guess i already have it in there let me redraw this whole chart as this one is uh very 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 convoluted right now but something like this would kind of make sense jeez oh my god man forex is just i need to uh, i need to get back onto my count right here wow <laughs> What what a shit show right now. What a shit show. Um, anyways, back on to the GBDCs. Yeah, we do have kind of a rising wedge going on right here. And you actually do see that same sort of bearish divergence going on between this point and this point. One, two, three stabs. And, uh, you know, yeah, we could come back down and, and technically te and theoretically test all the way down to 464 um before really doing anything uh be before really breaking the structure but if four if four fit sorry i guess that's more like four 465 we call it. if 465 does break which is also going to be the yellow 20 mic special on the daily uh then i would be looking for a move back down to the 420 26 427 range which would likely put bitcoin again around that uh 3750 3800 range uh, depending upon the premium right now and then overall, this would really just start to look like a breakage of structure. So, you know, I'd, I'd just be bearish off, bearish off that, you know, in general. Um, anyways, uh, GBDC has been the leader and has, you know, ha has signified when moves were happening in the past. So perhaps uh, perhaps might be insightful still in the future. I mean, the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. Daily stokes are still up and looking fine. Um, so really going to depend on where we close today. But uh, that will be what I'm monitoring there. And we'll, we'll obviously see that during the live stream later, most likely. Anyways, getting back on to... Let me make sure that my uh, uh, I'm still streaming. There we go. Good streaming. Okay, awesome. And back onto the uh, back onto the charts. 
Uh, let's go check out CMEs. CMEs at 40.35, and CMEs look fine as well. But look at this: we do have resistance coming in right from the from, um, from the past couple prior highs, one, two, and that's exactly where we've gotten up to. On, or I mean, a few a few bucks shy of this area um, on uh, on CMEs. Uh, so right around 465, 470 ish area, which essentially lining up with our current, you know, our our, our current. Uh, potential rising wedge resistance um, going down to the lower time frames I think that this idea could be extrapolated a little bit better as if we go all the way over here and look at it like like this something like this you do see a counter trend line forming right here and we got this guy going on oh my god man <laughs> I'm seeing the most crazy things on my other screen right now um, but something like this but uh, but overall um, I from uh, from CME perspective, I would be more uh, you know just like once we broke out of 3900, I would be I would still be more bullish on this one than not. I don't really see too much too much stopping this thing from um, from 4150 to 40 4200 ish essentially. Also the 89 exponential coming in right around that uh, right around that zone as well. And we have uh, we have confirmed a pretty powerful exponential moving average cross right here on the daily. Although for the past year it has not been it, it has not had a good track record. Actually, the only time that we've seen it in the past year was right here on the run to 8400, which literally as soon as it crossed, that was when the uh, uh, that was when the red dildo party began. So that's what I'd be saying right there. Uh, let's go back on to Mr. Bitcoin and let's go down to a lower time frame. See what he's doing. Yeah. Other than that. Don't really see too much. We do see hourly Stokes trying to cross the upside right now. Needs to hold this area though. If, if it wants to maintain this more bullish posturing, needs to hold the four thousand support. Uh, once that breaks, then 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 it starts to look a lot more like a rising wedge um, rather than some sort of constructive uh, consolidation. Anyways, let's go check out uh, some of the top shit coins. Let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin, and this is where I start to get a little more apprehensive because Mrs. Litecoin does not look to mrs Litecoin does not mrs Litecoin looks like she wants to have a leg up here but as long as it's below 60 what is it like 60 well it's really like 64 bucks but really if, if we get back to the prior hat actually be looking to be a seller um we have severe bearish divergence going on in the daily right now uh, one, two, three, four stabs, uh, and struggling to hold the bullish control zone. Not only that, but daily stokes are crossed uh, down as well. And daily jewel is per, is giving a weak signal right now, weak, uh, a very weak signal. But we did get the run down to $56 yesterday, or close enough to $56. Uh, the reaction has been pretty damn good. So I do think that it's it's more likely that we do get another grind of the of the current high. But I do think that that will be re uh, be rejected. We are still in the formation of this ascending broadening wedge, which with with a very massive resistance coming in right around 64. So as long as it's below there, I would be you know a little bit more apprehensive with this one. And that is why I'm a little bit apprehensive with Bitcoin as well, as uh, as Litecoin, Mrs. Litecoin led the market to the upside. And now, perhaps you know, if it, you know if it tops out, it might lead the market to the downside as well. Um, however, on the other side of things, uh, Mrs. Litecoin could come all the way back down to fifty one and a half, fifty two dollars, and that would be completely fine. Uh, as a golden dildo cross is likely and coming very soon. I'd say in the next few days, uh, the longer that Mrs. Litecoin can hold above about fifty six dollars, the more and more likely that it, you know, uh, 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 I mean, it probably will, it, it will happen in the next few days if Mrs. Litecoin can maintain above fifty six bucks. Um, but as you can see, that's. Uh, as you can see, that's quite, quite, uh, quite a far away, where, uh, away right now. Anyways, if it, if it were to get a golden cross, that'd be my first initial thing saying, um, don't be bearish. I mean, I haven't really been, uh, it, it would be saying, sorry, it's not, it's not necessarily don't be bearish. It's actually significantly more important than that. It'd be saying might be bullish. Um, I mean, that would probably come with come in conflict with breaking uh, 64, which at that point in time, if 64 breaks, I'd be looking for a move to, you know, 75, uh, 75, eight, you know, 90 ish area. Uh, that's kind of the next resistance cluster. It's been a quite a quite a strong move so far. But those are the two competing narratives that I see right there. Uh, so even if Mrs. Litecoin did pop back down to test around fifty four and a half dollars, it's not a death sentence. And that's kind of what I want to get out here. While I see all these bearish things, you know, bearish divergence in a bearish formation, Stokes coming down, um, even the jewel saying, uh, saying, uh, suggesting a slight, a, a slight sell signal, not a full on one by any means, by any stretch of the imagination. Holy fucking moly, man. Jesus. Powerful, uh, powerful forex. Let me just make sure that I actually uh, take advantage of this right now. Oh, so much fun! Another fun day in forex land. Another fun day in forex land. Okay, cool. But yeah, uh, as you know, as as long as it's maintaining about fifty-one dollars, this golden cross on the daily is something that is 
you know, it's, it's more likely to happen than not. It will happen as, you know, as long as it maintains about, about 51 bucks. Um, so, yeah. Alrighty, uh, let's go check out Mr. Buterall. What's he doing? 142. Jesus, let me just put a, uh, let me just put an alert right here. Make sure they actually get this. I've been waiting for this uh, trade all day, so if, if you're wondering why I'm so, so, uh, so flighty and looking at it, I do apologize about that. Uh, bad planning, but uh, but Mr. Buterall, same sort of setup as Mr. Bitcoin. Uh, definitely weaker in comparison, but uh, but the same sort of resistance would be coming in right around here. Let me get rid of this guy right now. And uh, the, whoops, wrong one. There we go. Uh, the same sort of resistance would be coming in right around here, which would be 144-ish area, and that has been the that that has been the resistance holding this guy back for the past well two weeks. Or sorry, not two weeks, almost a month now. Yeah, oh, Jesus Christ, almost a month. Wow, time really does fly. Um, <clears throat> if if Mr. Buterall can break above 144, I would be looking for a quick move to at, at the very least 152 and a half, and then probably somewhere around here, right around uh, 160, give or take a uh, give or take a bit. Um, of course, the critical support for Mr. Buterall to hold is this one right here at around 138. Uh, I do not believe it is this one any longer at, uh, at 134. If 138 breaks, I would be looking for a move back down to about 120, 126 and a half, 127. Uh, this is on Finex, of course, um, so that will be of, of, of great interest. Anyways, uh, Jesus, man, that is charging back up. I think I might actually get filled. Ooh, this is exciting. This is really exciting. Um, so yes, uh, it's kind of kind of right in the middle here. Uh, we do see Daily Stokes getting a little bit tired. We we can see uh, Mr. Buterall again, the weakest of the bunch. Uh, Daily RSI completely neutral, neither bullish nor bearish. Uh, let's go to a four hour. You know, I you know if if I really had to say something about the daily RSI, I actually would say it's a little bit more on the. Uh, I suppose it would be a little bit more on. Mm, no, I'm I'm not I'm not going to say that. I, I I don't think that's appropriate to say. Let's go down to a four hour. Uh, four hour is showing any is it showing anything not actually it looks pretty much pretty much exactly to the, to the daily uh, four hour resistance would be technically right around 146 um, as you can see I made this chart on a daily not a four hour so if I was making it on a four hour the the resistance would be right around 140 sorry 145 and a half we'll call it 145 and a half okay um all right let's get on over and check out the other top shit coins now as uh we looked at gbc we looked at that let's go look at bnb what's bnb doing uh bnb losing it so we 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 called a top on this uh what was it a few days ago and i believe that that is still the right call bnb likely to come back down to 14 dollars 14 and a quarter i'd imagine um that's the next big area to be looking for a bounce and i would be looking for a bounce right there daily stokes are coming down daily rsi has massive divergence very similar to mrs litecoin back below the exponential and trending uh in trending as well and also the daily jewel giving a sell signal right here so not bad so i would be looking for for a uh, for move back down you know around 14 and a quarter 14 and 20 cents something like that um and then reassess right there i'd imagine that it probably does bounce on first pass the question the big question is do we lose 14 20 if 1420 is lost then i would be looking for a pretty a pretty massive move back down to about uh I mean, really, in, in, into the low 12s, essentially. High, high 11s, low 12s, if that were to happen. Um, but again, you know, overall, much more strong than the rest of the market. I think BNB doing its own thing. Also a little bit fundamentally driven as well, to be fair. Uh, let's go check out Zcash. Uh, Zcash, um, yeah, as long as it holds above uh, 55 and a half, I think it's okay. Um, did pretty much make a move towards our, our next resistance uh still being be held in by the 89 exponential but it does to me look like it wants to take out uh take it out to the upside however daily stokes are down daily rsi is showing mm, nothing nothing too crazy actually um again this one a little bit a little bit difficult actually right now because we did get the bullish break out of this uh, descending triangle but you can see that there is obvious resistance forming right here so until we break out of there, I mean, there's, again, not too scientific with the way that I'm looking at this right now. Let me actually put another horizontal in right here and we can use this. And we are getting some pretty uh, positive crosses on the exponentials. I mean, to me, it looks like it does want to take a leg up. Uh, next resistance would be around $67.5. I mean, we kind of, yeah, we got pretty damn close last night. Does that count? Um, yeah, I, I'd be leaning towards upside on this one. As long as, long as it's above $57.5, I'd be leaning towards upside here. Uh, let's go Bcash, Bcash, the real Zcash, consolidating right at the uh, at the edge of the 89 exponential. A um, little bit of bearish divergence going on, nothing crazy though. Uh, same thing for this one, you know, kind, uh, kind of same setup as long as it holds above about 145 and a half. Uh, I would be I would be looking for this one to come back down. Actually, I would be looking for it to come back down and test supports. We are seeing the uh, daily stokes start to cross down. 
Um, but more importantly, <clears throat> uh, more importantly right now, we do see that if it were to come back down, I'd be looking for a move back down to uh, 148. Uh, if things get a little bit crazier, 142 and a half. But as long as 142 and a half holds, I would not be bearish on it. Um, I'd just be looking for a pullback if 142 fails, and I'd be looking for a move all the way down to 126. Uh, I mean, maybe even low 100s again if, uh, if that gets a little bit more crazy. Anyways, back on to the Trons. What else do we got? Troners over here, still in the same range. Again, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm neutral on this one, as neutral can be. If I had to call a direction, I guess I'd say down. Daily Stokes are getting a little bit uh, tired here. Uh, we are below most of the, we're trending below most of the, uh, most of the trending uh, uh, exponentials. Uh, daily RSI is more on the bear side, but still really picking at uh, uh, picking at feathers or picking at straws, whatever the fuck the saying is. Um, more importantly, resistance right around two two and a half cents. That's where things actually start to change around support right around two point one eight cent, two point one nine cent. Um, we're literally right in the middle of there, so I have no interest in taking a trade here. Uh, Neo Cash, what's Neo Cash doing? Uh, Look, looks very similar to Mr. Buterol. Uh, resistance right here, 960. Uh, support right here, 920. If we break out of 960, I'd be looking for a move towards uh, 10 and a half, 1040. Break below 920, I'd be looking for a move towards uh, 830. Um, let's go check out EOS Cash. I'm gonna guess that it's probably the exact same shit. In fact, it is the exact same shit. We got resistance right at uh, 385, support right at uh, 370, whichever one breaks first. If we break to the upside, I'd be looking at a move towards prior high, 430, 440. Uh, if we break to the downside, I'd be looking for a move towards uh, 330 ish area. Uh, whoops, wrong XRP. Let's go to the let's go to the other one that's already charted out. XRP still in the context of a descending broadening, uh, sorry, descending triangle. Jesus Christ, uh, having a loss for words right now. Um, and 32 cents is the area to beat. So Mr. Uh, Mr. Ripple's nipples needs to be freed above 32 cents. If that were to happen, I would be looking for a move towards uh, 33 and a half cent. But really, personally speaking, I'd be looking for a move towards uh, 34 and a half cent. Uh, you know, we all know how how Mr. Ripple's nipples moves. Um, but still, finding resistance at the edge of this uh, at, at the edge of this triangle. And it is interesting to me that we still see Mr. Ripple struggling in this area, um, while everything else is kind of looking a little bit more on the positive side. I'd say uh, support, obviously. Uh, 30.8 cents, 30.8 cents uh, fails. I'd be looking for a move down to 29 cents. Uh, that's where the big support does does indeed lie. As if that one's broken, then it's the death and decay drop all the way to low 20 cent to high teen cent. Uh, not fucking good. Uh, Monero Cash, Monero Cash also looking like one of the stronger ones as well. Taking out yesterday's resistance and and using it so far, testing it as support and uh, and rallying off there. I like it. I, I think Monero wants to take another leg towards uh, 57, 58 bucks. Yeah, about 57 and three quarters. Um, let's see, Stellar. Yeah, Stellar struggling again, finding our magical resistance trend line from a couple nights ago as resistance and uh, coming back down. Let's see, Daily Stokes probably gonna be coming down. Yes, they are. Daily RSI not having any sort of divergences, but has lost the exponential right here. Let's go down to a four hour. Uh, four hour has major divergence going all the way through. What's the highest time frame though that we can see? Uh, eight hour has pretty major divergence. Um, I would actually be looking for it to bounce here though. And if it pops back up to 11.6, 11, 11 and a half cents, I'd be looking to sell that probably. Uh, for right now, as you can see, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of resting on the 21 and also this horizontal. I think that we probably get a bounce off this area and that's probably gonna be a sell. Uh, yes, there is a golden cross in the eight hour. I think, I think there's a golden cross all the way up to maybe even a 10 hour, but, um, I do think that I, I, I'm not I'm not confident in this rally right now. Uh, you know, maybe we extend this out further and it actually gets a full on run at 12 and a half cent. But overall, I mean, that would be just be retesting this massive trend line going all the way back from uh, December, December of 2017, not even last year, but 2017. So <clears throat> again, it's uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd imagine if it did get right around there, that'd be a massive sell. But that's all the way around 12 and a half to 13 cents. Um, I think it's a little bit more likely that we pop back up to about 11 and a half cents, a little over 11 and a half cents, and then probably, probably, probably come back down and try to consolidate lower and then might get a move towards 13 cents. I think that would be a little bit more likely right now. Um, let's go check out traditional markets. Forgot to look at that uh, yesterday. Uh, still holding above 281, but we are seeing bearish divergence on a daily now. Actually, a pretty intense bearish divergence between this point and this point. Uh, back below the exponential, we do see daily stokes getting a little bit tired, but uh, still not signaling a down, actually. Um, if 281 does break, I would be looking for a move towards 279. 279, uh, I would I would be looking for a bounce right here. Um, I'm not necessarily bearish on traditional markets until we actually break through about 275 now. If we can break through 275, then yes, it will start to break the structure. The macro structure, however, uh, has a lot of work to be done. I mean, you know, it could come all the way down to about 265 and a half and still not necessarily break it. But 
but in the more immediate time frames, uh, that's what I'd be looking at. Uh, you can kind of you can kind of um, interpret this as a uh, you know as 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 a hunt as a trap around the 786 Fibonacci retracement but for right now you know is I'd be looking for that bounce right around 279 ish area um, and then reassess from there if 279 is broken uh, then I'd be looking towards 275 but uh, 279 you know if it does bounce it I'd probably be looking for a move back up around around the prior high so, or somewhere around 283 most likely uh, if that were to happen but right now actually actually is holding 281 quite you know quite uh, quite well i mean i wouldn't necessarily be bearish on something as long as it's holding above that critical breakout trend line which is the breakout trend line that uh that held this guy back for one two three four five times over the course of you know six months or so or sorry five five or six months so just because we're coming back right now to test it uh, has not broken yet. It has been actually quite resilient. But like I said, on the higher time frames, there, a, a, a lot of our oscillators are suggesting down. So I, I, I would be looking for a move down to 279, but I would be looking for it to balance. Um, and, if, uh, and, and if the balance can maintain back above 281 on a daily closing basis, that would be interpreted as most uh, as majorly positive. If it does lose 281 on a daily, that's where things start to change around a little bit. On the shorter term time frames anyways uh i think that covers it up for all those let's get back on to mr bitcoin and wrap up the most important things to be aware of on mr bitcoin then i'll leave you up till later tonight um but basically mr bitcoin as long as we are grinding this uh 40 45 ish region uh this actually technically is still making a rising wedge which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern uh, all higher time frames do look like they want higher, however. So if 4050 does break, I'd be looking for that full move onto the prior highs. Again, this has been a slug market, just going ever so, just like so fucking slow. Um, and uh, and of course, as long as Bitcoin holds above 4000, I would be looking at this with more bullish goggles. If uh, if 4000 does break, I'd be looking for a move down to 3950, and 3950 is now the now the critical support to hold for the bulls. If 3950 breaks, I'd be looking for a move down to about 3800, and that would start to destroy the whole structure. And then you have to start thinking about the monthly, you have to start have to start, have to start thinking about the weekly, and all those sorts of higher time frames, which are going to start to come into confluence with each other. For right now, we're actually seeing a divergence between the longs and the shorts. I forgot to mention this: longs are 24. 4,300 um, on the table, which is actually exactly where they were uh, on November before the break from 6,000 to 3,000. Shorts, on the other hand, are 21, 21 and a half thousand shorts. Uh, so we actually lost, we, we actually lost like what about a thousand yesterday um, and not looking too healthy right here. Um, again, you know, each and every time that the shorts have gone into this red box territory, that has been where major dumps emerged from, as we looked at on all of the other oscillators. But we're not seeing the same sort of reaction right now. So could this be insight into an actual change of behavior? It could be. Um, if Bitcoin were to really take a leg up here, I'd, I would consider that a change of behavior as far as that metric is concerned. Uh, so going back on to the lower time frames for Mr. Bitcoin, I think we talked about you know where the four hour goes. Um, Higher time frames, uh, resistance right around 41, uh, 4150, 4120 to 4150 uh, in, this, in this cluster right here. Um, if things do, you know, if things do get there, I probably will be looking for a trade to the downside. But for now, like I said, I'm just playing options. So life is easy when you're playing options. And I think I'll leave you with that. I'll be back on later tonight with some more live stream action. Look forward to seeing you there. If not, well, always, as always, want to be wishing you well. So take care and see you soon.